today we're going to make Don Don noodles. And Don Don noodles um, is a Szechuan recipe. It's street food. I first had it in Vancouver at a restaurant. I've never had it on the street. Um, not that I wouldn't if I could find it, but um, at Szechuan Chongqing, which is a restaurant in Vancouver that's not in Chinatown and it's not in Richmond. You'll probably want to look at your recipe, which is in the um, kit while we're doing this because I've made it maybe five or maybe not, maybe four times since I wrote the recipe. And I made it before that too. But it seems like every time I make it, I make a little change or I have an idea that, oh, th you know, something else would work. So if you want to take notes, go for it. I mean, this is really trial by flavor. Um, and the, f well, you can make your own chili oil, which I do and I recommend, and it's really easy. And you end up with a product that you know what it is and where it's come from. And I, the first batch I made, I made with some chili oil that I had in my fridge for God knows how long. And it kind of tasted fishy. And I thought, hmm, I think I'm going to make my own chili oil. <laughs> and all it is is um, a flavorless oil that you um, put it in a pan, you add Szechuan peppercorns. And Szechuan peppercorns are really interesting. They're not pepper. And they're sometimes called, and you find them in the, in the Chinese groceries as wild berries. But they, they're not related to black or white pepper. They, um, they're a citrus somewhere in their genealogy. And they're numbing. They make your mouth numb. They're not very hot. But, but there's this tingly thing going on in your mouth that's really fun. And they're usually mixed with a hot spice, like our crushed chilies. So what goes on then is called ma la, and it has two different Chinese characters. Um, and it means, one means hot and the other one means um, numbing. And there is, this is the only thing that you can't find in Mount Vernon, it, either it or a substitute. Although I've read that you can substitute, substitute white pepper, which of course is related to black pepper. I mean, it's kind of a whole different thing, but it also is numbing. And think about this. You have something in your cupboard that you eat at Thanksgiving that our grandmothers put on their gums when they got a toothache. And cloves are gonna come in later. So numbing isn't completely foreign, but these are completely foreign. For a while, they were banned in the United States, and it was because of their citrus genealogy, because other, the citrus growers were afraid of bugs or whatever, and or some awful disease. And I mean, these, would never bring in th that kind of disease. And somebody finally figured it out, and they, now they let us have them. Um, well, I'll keep going, and then I'll tell you where you can get all these things. These are star anise. And if you or anise, either one, you can. You can smell them through the bag. That you can't really, well, you can smell these too. <laughs> Except I might need them back. Um, no, I'm not going to make the chili oil. I'm just going to tell you how because it's way too easy. 
then the oil, and your recipe will tell you to put everything but, oh, it has a cinnamon stick in it too. It says don't, or it doesn't say don't, it, it says bring the, um, the other spices up to heat in, in a pan, and when that's done, put these in, but that's silly. I know it's silly. <laughs> so anyway, you can put these in at the beginning. Just put all the spices and bring it up really slowly. It, I mean, it's weird to bring something to the boil on low, but do it. And it takes quite a while, but it really pulls all that flavor out of those spices and it pays. There are lots of recipes for chili oil and you can look them up on, online and play with it. So, any questions about chili oil? It's hot. It is hot. <laughs> it has a quarter cup of these for a cup of oil. So, <laughs> I don't, you know, it's however you <laughs> can deal with it. Okay, I'm going to put these over here. And for then, for now, I'm going to go to the sauce because the sauce isn't cooked. <laughs> it's just mixed. And one recipe described it as a vinaigrette. It, and it kind of is. You know, it's kind of like a salad sauce. This whole dish isn't necessarily piping hot. It's a kind of a room temperature dish. Okay, so just in the bowl in your drawer, I'm going to talk about the ingredients as they um, are, are, are written here. And the first one is Chinese sesame paste. You can substitute peanut butter. Do not use tahini. Tahini is made with uh, raw sesame seeds. It's raw sesame butter. And it doesn't have the same flavor at all. I mean, it's not bad. It's wonderful <laughs> for its own uses. Um, but this is toasted sesame. And <laughs> the first time I, I went up to the um, Asian grocery in the old fountain district in Bellingham, I don't know if you've been there. It's way fun. The stuff is up to the ceiling and the aisles are about this wide. And, I mean, it takes a long time to shop there, and it's really fun. And there's this very quiet, kind of small man, and you are not sure if he speaks English because, you know, he just doesn't burst out with anything. But he knows where every single thing in that store is. And you can go down your list, and he'll thank you, and he'll take you right to it. it, it it's a wonderful experience going there. Well, I went and I was looking around for um, sesame paste. And by accident, I got black sesame paste, which is delicious. But it just looks like the devil. And <laughs> I mean, it, it, you know, it's just kind of, well, it's very black. It's like the old black licorice ice cream when you were offering licorice a while ago. That's what it looks like. And I was, I thought, oh no, what have I done? And it dawned, I mean, you know, I had to process it. And I, oh, black sesame seeds. I get it. <laughs> but these are made, the, this is made out of toasted white ones. And you could spread this on toast, like peanut butter. And you can substitute peanut butter and still get the same, the same effect. 
Okay, what am I doing? I need three tablespoons. Oh, I'm going to show you a little trick. That's how I feel sometimes when I go on and on and on. Um, this is kind of a restaurant thing, but it's a really handy thing. And that is, rather than me fishing, you know, this is, oh, it is going to fit in there, but it would be messy, and I'd be doing this um, w with a tablespoon into the jar. But I happen to know, and this is a really good thing to know, two tablespoons of a liquid or a paste is an ounce. So three tablespoons <laughs> is an ounce and a half. Da. So we can do that really easily. I'm taking it to zero here. I'm putting the bowl on when I turn the scale on. And then um, I have this handy dandy little bunch of this, um, you have to stir the oil in, in the sesame paste, just like you do with um, natural peanut butter. But it's a lot easier. You don't have to dump it out. You can just stick a fork in and do like this, and it mixes, which is a nice feature. OK, we're going for an ounce and a half here. Things like this, this is peasant food, this is street food, this is not oat cuisine. And you like peanut butter, you just put a little more in and, and it'll be just fine. Okay, I think I'll leave that in there. Okay, so you can do that with butter. You know, butter's a pain to um, measure for cookies or for anything. I, my mother taught me that old thing, you know, where you fill the cup half full with water and then you displace it with the butter and then you <laughs> stick it on this. And this lives on my counter and I use it all the time. So something to think about. <laughs> I told you it's going to be a lecture on what's in bottles. Um, now we go to soy sauce. And there's probably, well, there are probably this many <laughs> at that grocery store. <laughs> there's this many kinds of, of soy sauce. Um, dark soy sauce is very flavorful. It, it tastes to me like it has molasses in it. It's, it's got that, just that kind of molasses y, which is fine. And there's only um, three tablespoons. So three tablespoons. Um, oh, the other one has the dark soy sauce, but I'm, I'm going to use the lighter one. This is light soy sauce. It's not low sodium. It's just uh, the Chinese have that light and dark thing that has nothing to do with salt or fat or whatever else it might have to do with. Um, I, I love this brand, Pearl River, Pearl River Bridge. And you can get it at the little Asian, the Philippine Asian store right by La Bamba. Do you know where that is? It's across from River, it's a strip mall across from Riverside Health Club. And you, and he's got, he doesn't have everything. He doesn't have Szechuan peppercorns. In fact, <laughs> when I went in there and asked for Szechuan peppercorns, he said, I don't have any Saskatchewan. And I said, <laughs> no, 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 not Saskatchewan, Szechuan. I mean, he's Philip. Why am I thinking? Anyway, um, so what he has, he has. The one cool thing he has is little cans of coconut milk, which is usually all I want to use. And anyway, so it's it's handy and, and they're very nice in there. So, and this is delicious. This is Japanese, um, kikumans, but you know, either one of these or anything else that you have in your 
cupboard is just fine for this. And so I need three tablespoons of that. The best way to keep your measuring spoons is separate. <laughs> I have a drawer full of them. <laughs> that works. Okay. So then we have two teaspoons of sugar. Trust me, I measured it. Um, and then five spice powder and Chinese five spice, which I have all the ingredients of. You could make it um, and their recipes online. I don't. Um, you can buy it in whole pieces at Spice World in um, Seattle. They, they have garam masala, they have curries and garam masala and all those things in the whole spices and then they grind it for you, which is really kind of cool. So, uh, but um, what's in there is, and, and you're going to see these things in different parts of the recipe. Star anise, fennel seeds, and if any of you made that chickpea stew with the fennel seeds, you know it's kind of a licorice -y thing like the star anise. Um, then Szechuan peppercorns, I don't know if I got them back, but you guys know what they are. And here come the whole cloves. And these are all in, you know, they're proportional and I don't know what the proportions are, but you can find it online really easily. And our old friend, the cinnamon stick. So all of that's in just one little powder of which you only need a quarter teaspoon. But all of this is building a flavor base. Oh, it's right here. Quarter tea. And if you buy whole peppercorn, um, Szechuan peppercorns, you don't need to buy powder. If you have a designated, I hope, coffee grinder, the, <laughs> the old one, mine's held together with duct tape, and you've all seen it if you've been here before. Um, to grind spices. And so it isn't fine like a powder. It's more like, I don't know, it's grittier than that, a little bit bigger. And you can come up and look at it. And how much of that do I need? A half a teaspoon. I wonder if that, this came from the, uh, from you guys. This came from the kit. So. I think they were actually a little stingy on that. So you might want to. <laughs> OK. Now, it says a half a cup of chili oil. <laughs> right. Which, <laughs> there are a whole lot of reasons I wouldn't do that. I did it. Uh, no, I started with a quarter of a cup on the first recipe I made. And the, the whole dish was really oily. And, and it, it, it was unpleasantly oily to me. So I start with the tablespoon. And I'm a wimp for heat, and I know that. Um, so two, three. Well, they're four tablespoons in a quarter cup. And so use a half a cup if you like it. <laughs> you know, if, if you like that, that oiliness or you want that heat. But there are other ways to get heat without the oil. I mean, get out your sriracha and <laughs> give it a squirt. OK, so I'm just. 
I'm going to use a tablespoon because, because that's enough for me, and you guys don't get to taste it, which that kills me. When we have a new library with a commercial kitchen and everything is um, investigated and checked and all that, then you can taste what we make. But until then, you just have to smell. Um, two cloves of garlic. I chopped one of them. I minced one of them. This is made of metal. You probably didn't know that. And, and now the, the peeling just comes right off. But this is last year's garlic that I got at the farmer's market at the end of, you know, probably September, October. I waited till they were just getting ready to leave. So you know what's happening. It's starting to sprout. And, and this hasn't sprouted not nearly as quickly as what you buy at the store. But that green sprout can be bitter. So you can just reach in there and take it out. Oh, we have a garbage. And then, um, can you see? Go across it, across the the garlic and slice it as thin as you can. If you keep your knuckles on the knife, you won't cut your finger off unless you stick your thumb under there and don't do that. <laughs> keep, you know, keep it like this. And if you keep your elbow out, your wing, your, your thumb goes under by itself, <laughs> which is really a cool thing. I, I don't know why, it's just how we're made. And then do this for as long as you feel like doing it and small as you want. And I'm thinking, I haven't done it, um, mostly because I was out of it, but I'd put fresh ginger in here too. That, I love ginger, so if you love ginger, I'd mince some of that up, probably a teaspoon or two, and put it in the, in the sauce. My students will know this isn't Gilbert um, minced, but it's as minced as I get at home. <laughs> you don't have to. You don't have to do restaurant mincing. Our kitchen chef was very particular, and the students had to mince things really mincy. So um, can't do without my cheat sheet. And then after you cook the noodles, you're going to put a little of the noodle water in here. But this is pretty much it. It's the sauce. And you know what? You could put more oil and more vinegar and use it on a salad, any kind of Asian salad. It's, um, yeah, it's just really really good stuff. Or those, you know, those noodle salads that are so yummy with raw vegetables in. Okay. I discovered all sorts of things when I was um, experimenting with this recipe. And in Vancouver, I'm pretty sure the meat was browned so crisply and in little tiny, it was just little tiny crumbs. You couldn't even, you might even say, no, that doesn't have any meat in it. Um, I, I like one dish meals, so I want a little more meat and a little, you know, I, I want to be able to, so you'll see what it looks like. This is the new library walk, which I seasoned today, and I don't know if I'm supposed to do that, but nevertheless. Um, something I learned 
that I really hadn't thought about before was the weight of the walk, because you have to be able to manipulate it with one hand. And I have arthritis. <laughs> and it's, and I use a pan that isn't really a walk, it's just kind of shaped like a walk. Um, so we had to find a lightweight one. And um, I think it was Cook's Illustrated had a really nice article about that. Um, and this is their recommendation, which is a Joyce Chen. And I, they got it from online. It's not overly expensive. It's carbon. And that's you want a carbon steel wok. And that's why you have to season it. Um, stainless is OK, but it, it just doesn't conduct. And this thing conducts like crazy. Because to season it, you put two tablespoons of oil and wipe it around. And you have to do it on top of the stove because it's got a wooden handle. You can't do it in the oven <laughs> like you do your cast iron. But it's the same process. And then you do it again, and then you do it again, and then you do it again. And it's been done four times. And they said it would darken with use, but I don't know if that's what they meant. <laughs> but we'll see. I, um, OK, that's on. This is new. The library has bought this wonderful new induction burner. I used to have to go up to the college and borrow one of theirs. Um, and this is a sweetheart. If you want one, note it's a duck's top with an X. It's really, really a nice um, burner. And they're so much safer than anything with a gas. Um, and with any kind of gas and more than electricity, it turns off. If I do this, <laughs> pretty soon there, it starts blinking at me. It, um, it turns off. So I, I'm just going to mix the spices that are going to go in there. I started talking about pork. and. When I experimented with different things, I ended up liking the chicken the best. And I thought I would like the mushrooms the best. But right in there, three cups, not one cup, because they cook down so much. And get a, you know, a serious mushroom. <laughs> um, probably like a portobello or a well, even the creminis, the brown ones, because you're going to chop them up quite a bit. And, um, but they cook down a lot. And I didn't, I didn't like them as much as I thought I would. But if you're vegetarian, give it a try, because you probably wouldn't care if you weren't eating meat. <laughs> so, and and it's, it's not a bad thing. It's just it didn't have enough umami and mushrooms are all about umami, so I don't know why it didn't. Um, so, OK. More weird um, spices somewhere here. Well, I'll just use one of these dishes. OK, we have. Can anybody see it? I have a hard time seeing things that are right in front of me. Oh, because I was looking. It calls for sweet bean sauce. It just smells real Chinesey and kind of beany. It's soy. <laughs> and um, But hoisin sauce is really easy to find. These are both sweet. And you know, it's real Chinesey and sweet, too. And I just love hoisin sauce, and I use it in a whole bunch of different things. But I just for you, I bought bean sauce. So we're going to put two teaspoons. 
No, fermented bean sauce is hot. Usually, not. This is sweet. And because foreign um, things don't have to have the ingredients, I, I suspect there's quite a bit of sugar in this. You can, you can taste it. Um, I'll give you the end of a spoon. Yeah, the, yeah. Suzanne, there's a sweet bean taste too. Is that, you want the sauce, not the taste? Probably the paste just thicker. is thicker, yeah. I would guess it doesn't really matter. And all these weird things that you can't get in Mount Vernon, I, I don't think I got this at the Asian store. I think I got it in Bellingham. Go to Mala Market, which is a family-owned um, online place to buy. I, I, people who know me know I hate Amazon, so I always try to go to local um, or, you know, more smaller places. And Mala Market is, I have a friend who buys just a lot of stuff from there. This is Chinese wine. I just looked at it, it's 16% alcohol. Um, this is a cooking wine. It's actually Japanese. Cooking wine has salt in it. It says don't drink it. This is kind of sherry-ish a little bit. You know, a lot of times people say substitute sherry um, in Chinese cooking. It's, it's fine, but this is, this is kind of nice and you can use it for other things that you, you know, <coughs> that you might use sherry as an ingredient in. And this one, I can't figure this out. It says, it's supposed to be Shao, S-H-A-O-X-I-N-G, Shao Xing. And this is Shad Xing. So I don't know if this is some kind of cheap knockoff or <laughs> what it is. It's not very expensive, whichever way it is. But it'll be sitting right next to the Shaoxing. And I looked it up, and there is no Shaoxing on, online. <laughs> so unless somebody got a whole bunch of, you know, had a whole bunch of labels printed, <laughs> and, and the D looks kind of like an O. But anyway, buy this and you won't have any. Um, okay, another two teaspoons. This one doesn't have an alcohol amount, so I, sus I think under a certain amount they don't have to say. So I suspect it's under whatever that amount is. And it, you're pouring, yeah, you're pouring this sauce into a hot pan, so the alcohol just goes like that. And I don't think you need to worry about it. But if, if you are concerned with it, you can use um, apple cider vinegar. And that, you know, that would fit into all this stuff. Okay, we, this time we will use the dark soy sauce, and you really should sniff these things <laughs> before you go. I don't know if you, you can't really smell the molasses, I can't, but uh, what am I want here? I need the teaspoon. And then some more five spice powder. spouter powder. Well, that's all she gave me, so I'm going to put it in. These, the five spice powder came out of your kit, so I'm just knowing how careful these librarians are. and I'm sure that they're perfectly um, measured. <laughs> okay, I'll just... Mix that up. The five spice likes to float on the top like those kind of spice powders do. 
we have fermented or yeah pickled vegetables where'd they go here they go it calls for these are fermented mustard greens and it's chopped really, really fine. And um, Shannon went shopping for me because she lives in Bellingham, and she got these, which are not really, really fine. And if you don't have this, you can use sauerkraut, and that isn't really, really fine. So if you use sauerkraut or something like this, you just chop it really, really fine. Or not, you know, doesn't. Um, do you remember? Do you remember in the olden days in uh, Skagit and Whatcom counties when they were growing peas mm -hmm. for the freezing plants, and there were just huge mounds of pea silage, which, as a child, I thought was the worst smell I had ever smelt in my life. Mm -hmm. <laughs> this kind of smells like. That. <laughs> But, but think about it. I mean, that was fermenting pea leavings, and this is fermented mustard greens. And so it, there's every reason. I mean, the cows love the peas. And you don't notice this. It just gives a little tang, I guess. Um, it's hard to sort all these flavors out in your mouth. So um, anyway. That's our pea silage. But don't let that put you off. It's, if you're looking for it, and it's called yakai, is the one that the recipe called for. And so if you, you know, really want to do the more authentic thing, you can do that. And this came very, very nicely in little um, foil packets. So you didn't have a big jar of something that was going to get moldy in your fridge because you won't use it very often. But all of this kind of thing freezes fine. You just got to get it in there in time. Or I do. I, that's what I'm, okay, I suspect, because this has oil in it, that it's going to be a bit of a mess. So we'll see. And you, there's a third of a cup. So you know, given the one teaspoon and da, 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 all this stuff, um, this is quite a bit. <coughs> and this is just pickly. The, the Chinese do that a lot. They use pickly, pickle fermented stuff. And my guess is that's about a third of a cup. And if it isn't, it's fine. I can't imagine that street vendors are measuring <laughs> things. I mean, they're doing it like their mom did it and like their grandmother did it. And they're doing this and this and this. So, so I do it that way, too, with something like this. This isn't as bad as I thought it was going to be. I thought it, it, it just looked like it might be juicier and gosh I hope it isn't hot Now we can cook the chicken. I just because, as I said, I, I wanted to chew on the meat. You know, I didn't want it to be little crumbles. So you can choose how far down you want this to go.
And it says two teaspoons of oil divided. But with, uh, with the yakai, which is much drier, it just, the, the liquid just, it's just gone. And so I'm going to add the, um, I'm going to add both teaspoons of oil before I start. And there's kind of a mantra. And I, I really don't know why, but I'm sure there's a, a good reason. And that is hot wok cold oil. So we're going <laughs> to let it heat and then put the... Um, that miserable teaspoon. I don't have enough teaspoons. I need to go to the Goodwill and get a whole big handful of them. And, you know, just crumble it up. I don't, um, I don't just dump the whole thing in there and then do it. It, it just doesn't brown that way. But, you know, you want to get it good and done. It's chicken after all. But smelling good. When you're browning things, don't stir them. Because <laughs> if you stir them, the, the liquid comes out, and pretty soon you got a stew. You don't have nice brown um, meat. You just have to wait um, until somewhere there's this gorgeous new, oh, here it is. This fabulous stirrer came with the pan, so. You want a, a wok with a flat bottom. Woks are meant for wok stoves that have the fire, you know, coming all around, the rounded bottom ones. And even if you have a ring, it kind of goes there, but not like, see, I, I should have done what I said. I use canola oil because it has a high smoke point and it's healthy. And this stuff is um, non-GMO and that's just why I use canola oil. Peanut oil is, is common with um, Chinese cooking and it's, it's a nice oil too. One thing about a wok that they usually have long handles so you can hook it under your forearm and, um, and that helps when, because right now I could use both hands, but 
when I do it, I, I can't, so. You're usually browning something or frying something and then tipping it into something that you have to hold on to, so. I don't usually use metal on metal. I don't like the sound, for one thing. <laughs> I, I'm, at home, I have a wooden one of these. But since we got it with the pan and it, the library, I thought I'd better use it. Now, it tells you to dump this in. And then I, I think I can't even remember exactly what it tells you. And it says, this looks like it's burning. And when you put this in, there's a lot of sugar in it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn the pan off. And at home, I would just pull it to the side. Because the liquid just goes. And, and then it can burn. You get that burnt sugar taste. And even though it looks like that's what's happening, the taste is, at least the ones I've done at home, the dish should smell really good. And this is a, you know, this is a wonderful heavy pan, so it's gonna cook. And then we're gonna put the pickles in there. And then maybe turn it on again for a little bit. But see, the, the liquid is essentially gone right now. I don't know if you can see it. Yeah, it's... Um, and there's nothing there, I think, that really has... To, I mean, everything's cooked. The chicken was the only thing that you cared about, and the garlic. But wouldn't ginger be good in this? I think so. <laughs> and I bet there are probably six recipes online that have ginger in them. OK, I'm going to call that done. Now, I dasn't. Put that down. Oh, I have a dry towel in here somewhere. That's wet. Do you lose things? I mean, things that you had in your hand. I know, but I don't want to give that up. But here it is. I lose things that I know I had in my hand just a second ago. Yeah, I, th I think I have friends in some of those places. Okay. Now, one of the cool things about this is that you can cook the meat, put it away. You, here's the sauce. You know, that can go in the fridge. I'm, I'm only going to make one serving of the noodles today because because I want to, and I don't. <laughs> um, it's 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 just less wasteful <laughs> when you know for something like this when you guys can't taste it, but it's what I do at home, and I can just you know take out as much meat as I want and as much sauce as I want and as much noodles as I want, and um, so we will turn this on. Whoops. Oh, I see. This is new, and I haven't played with it very much. When you push boil, it goes to the highest heat. If, if anybody wants to time this, I, if you've ever used induction, it's faster than gas, faster than electricity. Electricity is faster than gas, but it's fabulous. But.
This is a baby bok choy. And this is a baby bok choy that I have washed carefully. I haven't washed this one. I usually cut the ends off because I wanted to show you it's, it's like celery, you know, the dirt's gonna hide in that bottom guy. So if you just cut the bottom of it off, you can get those, you can get the dirt. And I'll get the dirt away from there. When I make this at home, I, I like a lot of vegetables in it, just because that's what I like. Um, I'm also lazy, so I have those bags of washed spinach because <laughs> I'm going to cook the vegetables in the last minute of the noodles. And so, you know, I can just fill up that pan with spinach and in one minute it'll be wilted and ready to rock and roll. Um, something I discovered the other day, I've got sugar snaps in my garden and I, I, you know, I just pick them a few at a time as they ripen. And so they were sitting on the counter. So I cut them up and I threw those in there in that same minute. It just makes them bright green and, you know, picks up the sweetness. And they were wonderful. They were the best thing because they had that really nice crunch. These have a nice crunch. This is... Are you, you're probably familiar with baby bok choy and grown up bok choy and all the rest. It's, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Big bok choy is um, all of them. You have to be really careful when you cook them because you can overcook them in about a flash and then they're slimy. <laughs> so, anyway. I'm, I'm going to cut them lengthwise. They're really pretty. <laughs> and then... And then the other lengthwise. Because what I want to end up with is... Um, I want to end up with these, the pretty leaves. This isn't happening very fast. Dang. I was bragging about the induction and now it's not behaving. I was going to time it today and I just never got around to it. This is when you cut yourself, when you're messing around with greens. They cover up your hand. I'm going to put the peas in. Come on. Um, noodles are another whole <laughs> ingredient thing. The ones you have are ramen noodles, the ones in your kit. They cook really fast. I, I, they didn't come in a package, or I didn't see the package they came in, so I don't know if they're fried. I, I just as soon have a plain noodle um, and maybe one that cooks a little bit longer than this. This is a two minute baby. <laughs> um, so you put the noodle in and about a minute and then throw the vegetables in and about another minute and it's, it's ready. I... I love whole wheat noodles, and they are really good in this. Um, this this is a good brand, and the spaghetti this is not spaghetti. It's just kind of a fat angel hair, um, but it's a it has a wonderful texture for this. It 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 has a bite to it. It, it never gets mushy. But then I had this in my cupboard, and I. This is brown rice pasta. And it's, can you see it's rotini? 
and it has the most wonderful texture. It goes, I, it's bouncy in your mouth. And I ended up liking these noodles, which are, you know, absolutely not authentic at all, <laughs> the best. They, and I got these, and I found another one. They have penne. Um, I think that's what this is. No, this is macaroni, whatever it is. I found this at Hagen today, but I think I got my original package at the co-op. So it doesn't have a long life. So if you're going to use it, eat it the same day or the next. You know, don't make a big salad out of it that you're going to eat all week. Mm. It, it kind of dissolves and gets icky. And they, I think they also have a long noodles too. I just, I hadn't seen the whole selection like I found at Hagen today. And I do this because I'm not a slurper. I know I'm boring, but that's. Ah, uh, yes, I have a clean fork. Oops. No, we don't want that. We want to. <laughs> you know, when stuff boils over on these induction burners, it doesn't burn on like rice on a ceramic top. Gosh, Graham Kerr used to do that on TV all the time. You know, you get talking and the thing boils over and then I'd be scrubbing all afternoon because that's starchy water. But this, it's great. And I, I don't know if I need to mess. I'm just messing. As soon as it, it kind of stays in a clump, and, and I was just messing. I wasn't doing anything particular. But when it kind of comes out of the clump, it's time to put the vegetables in. And then it stops boiling for a sec. And this is how you serve it. Oh, I want to put a little bit of, I'll wait to put a little pasta. Well, I can put the pasta water. Put the sauce in the bottom of the bowl. It would be about a quarter. It's your recipes for four or six, whatever you decide. So you put the sauce in the bottom of the bowl. And then you don't really need to drain the noodles real, real dry, because if they're kind of wet, it's okay. The only way to test a noodle is to put it in your mouth. <laughs> and that's not quite ready. These other noodles take, you know, 9, 12, whatever minutes and um, And then you just wait till the last minute and throw in the vegetables because you want them nice and fresh and crunchy. Okay. hot pad problems here. Walk is cooled off, so. Oh, it, it was saying pot. It wanted the pot back. Because <laughs> if there's no pot on there, you don't, the, the, the only heat you get is between the, it's the pan and the, and the stove top. So if you take the pan off, 
<laughs> it says, I want my pot back. Okay, so you're just gonna put those in there. And then, um, well, I can just use this. This is your meat and fermented vegetables. You can just serve it like this, or you can mix it however however you want. I know at the, at the, at Sichuan Chongqing, they, they mixed it, but you know, that was waiters and all that kind of thing. It's kind of nice to mix it. Can you smell stuff good? Because you should probably smell that, start to smell the sauce, which, I didn't put any um, pasta water in there. And it, you just kind of look at it and see if it looks dryish, you know, put a tablespoon or so in. If it doesn't, I mean, this looks fine to me. And then, and then, peanuts. Or sesame seeds. I don't know why they didn't say sesame seeds on there, but roasted sesame, toasted sesame seeds. And having a noodle bowl is a wonderful thing. <laughs> it can be a side dish or a whole dish. I mean, if you were to order this in a restaurant, it would be one of several that, that you'd order, you know, for a bunch of people. But it makes a great lunch or supper or or whatever thank you all for coming i just love to do this with people here that i can talk to and make faces at it's a it's so much fun bye, bye. <laughs>